So today I wanted to show you a Team Foundation service. Uh, the service right now is in beta and it's really an online version of uh, uh, the TFS in a cloud. Uh, so since it's in beta you have to have an invitation code and you can request one and uh, hopefully Microsoft is going to get back to you um, you know in a, in a couple of days I guess and uh, and you'll be able to um, to sign up for a preview. So um, I, uh, I'm signing up for a preview right now. The, the creation, the account creation process is pretty simple. Um, the email that you requested, the, uh, uh, the uh, invitation code doesn't have to be this particular email that you signed in with. So it can be some other live ID uh, email. And your account is created pretty much uh, in, uh, in a few moments. And um, right after that, you can uh, you can pretty much manage your uh, Team Foundation service online. So um, the home page looks like this. So uh, there's a couple of important links here. The links to your TFS service, right? The URL of your TFS service, uh, the link to create a new project, um, and the link to download the software that you'll be able to use uh, to create your um, uh, to basically um, connect to your project. Uh, and obviously, in order for you to actually start working with uh, with TFS, you're going to have to create a new project. So you specify a project name, just like you would do on an on-premises version. Um, I'm just going to give uh, this one a name, test TFS project, and some description. And as always, uh, you have a couple of templates to choose from. I'm just going to choose a different template than default, uh, this MSF for Agile, and I'm going to say create project. One thing to to note is that uh, in here I I'm gonna uh, obviously uh, speed up the process <laughs> by by pausing this recording, but uh, uh, the creation process may take a little bit um, a bit of a time, a couple of minutes, uh, no more than that. When you're ready, you just navigate to the uh, to the project, and this is your project homepage with uh, sort of a new look and feel. Um, there's um, a couple of uh, uh, links right there on the top to create your user story, task, a bug. Uh, we're just going to create a new user story um, uh, and uh, just come up with uh, with some uh, demo names such as uh, user logs and user story. Uh, below you can specify the details uh, and as well as um, assign this user story to someone and specify some of the other default TFS fields. If you've worked with TFS before, those are no new, uh, you know, those are those are usual fields that you could you could provide uh, for more details. Now you can save or add more details uh, to this particular user story. Uh, I'm just going to leave this one as is, and here it shows up in the most recent items uh, on my dashboard. I can go back to it and. Uh, um, kind of work on it a little bit more and attach, uh, you know, uh, storyboards, attachments, uh, view history. So if you've um, added some changes, you can take a look at the uh, changes, you know, the change history. Again, the same thing as uh, as you would expect in a normal uh, sort of on-premises version of TFS. I'm going to go back to the uh, um, my TFS project here and. Uh, um, uh, to take a look at some of the other work items, uh, and here you see the queries. Um, you can create your own queries or use some of the team queries um, that exist in, in the online service version. Pretty much very similar to on-premises. A um, couple of other tasks or, or uh, items that you can, project items that you can create, uh, bug uh, in here, one of the most common ones. Um, uh, well, not for your software, um, but <laughs> for most uh, uh, for most projects, you're going to create a bug. So, in this case, we're just going to create a demo bug. As you can see, the uh, fields here as well are pretty typical. Nothing nothing new here. Um, one thing you you notice that uh, uh, well, one thing that I would expect is when I assign a bug to someone, it'll be you know the bug is going to be emailed to that person. That didn't happen by default, uh, but you can change those settings and interesting things that you can do here is you can actually uh, invite users that uh, are not added to the project as the, at this time. For instance, this is my other uh, email address, live email address, and I can just uh, add myself to the project uh, just by searching for it. And uh, so it doesn't have to be necessarily registered with the account. Obviously, in order to sign in, you would have to um, that account would have to have an invitation code and so on, but right now it's added to the project uh, just like that. Um, to take a look at some of the project settings um, or TFS settings, uh, TFS service settings, um, there is a general overview. You can create your iterations here, your areas here. Um, 
so you can customize the areas of your project uh, as well as security here here's you can manage security um, decide who has access to what uh, very similar groups to what you have on an on-premises version of TFS and in here you can specify your alerts so in here you can uh, set up a check-in alerts the build alerts and uh, uh, sort of define who gets emailed when when things uh, when certain events happen. So obviously uh, one of the biggest advantages is to using TFS is to actually use it in, uh, in Visual Studio. So in here I'm connecting it to an instance of Visual Studio. I'm going to add a new server and uh, specify my TFS server, but I get an error. And uh, the reason why I get an error, obviously the connection information failed. Uh, my guess is because uh, TFS doesn't understand uh, or, or this client version doesn't understand the, the one that I'm using Visual Studio 2010 doesn't understand how to connect to a live uh, uh, how to authenticate with live ID which is used by TFS service so um, obviously if we log in um, to the online again TFS service uh, you'll you'll notice that uh, there's a there's a little uh, link for you to download the software that will make that um, that will enable you to uh, connect to the TFS server uh, service uh, from within the client application or Visual Studio so it takes you to the little blog here where you can uh, um, you know download this particular um, uh, software and and that uh, should resolve the problem I haven't tried that but uh, it says it's going to work, so it's got to work, right? So that's pretty much it, uh, what I wanted to uh, show you. Hopefully it gives you a brief overview of uh, the fact that there's other um, options out there. Rather